The fight over gun control picks back up on Capitol Hill today. The House Judiciary Committee is holding a hearing on several bills in response to the school shooting in Uvalde, Texas. CBS News political correspondent Caitlin Huey Burns is following this from Washington. So, Caitlin, uh, take us through these bills and what these lawmakers are talking about today. Hey, Vlad. Well, Congress is on recess, of course, but they are having a special markup of a bill in the House to show that they are addressing this urgent issue. Now, what they are considering today in the Judiciary Committee is a ban on high-capacity magazines. Uh, they are also uh, considering legislation to increase the age limit to buy a semi-automatic rifle from 18 to 21. They're also including some regulations uh, on bump stocks and also some uh, measures to uh, that deal with requirements for gun storage. Um, this is a House Judiciary Committee hearing uh, marking up this bill, and that means that they'll have a vote in the committee and then move it on to the House uh, after that. So. I suppose talking is better than not talking, but you know, say this bill actually makes it through the House. Really, what mm -hmm. chances do we have in the Senate when it comes to this? Anne Marie, pretty much zero. And lawmakers on the House side know that. They know that this is not something that will get 60 votes in the Senate. Uh, and what's interesting here, too, is that it doesn't include a ban on assault weapons. Now, Nancy Pelosi talked about that the other day, saying that that is something that she supports. Of course, that's something that President Biden supports, but it's not in this package because it doesn't necessarily have enough Democratic votes just yet in the House. Uh, so what they're trying to do in the House is come up with measures that can pass the House. They know it's not going to pass the Senate, uh, but it does put the pressure on the Senate to act uh, because we know the Senate is having bipartisan meetings. They're trying to come up with a framework. And so this is trying to put the pressure points here. It's also the House's way of getting Democrats and Republicans on record ahead of a midterm year about where they stand on these issues. Now, what's interesting is Take, for instance, this provision in the House bill that would raise the age limit for purchasing a uh, semi-automatic rifle. That's something that we've seen support for in the states. Remember, Florida passed a similar measure after Parkland. But talking to Republican lawmakers last week, I asked them about some of those measures. They said that that's a non-starter. They don't want federal legislation on that. They think that should be left up to the states. Uh, yesterday, uh, House Speaker Pelosi said at an event that the House will work on another assault weapons ban. Uh, what do we know about that, Caitlin? We should remind our viewers that President Clinton did sign an assault weapon ban in 1994, which mm -hmm. then uh, Republicans in a Republican-controlled House uh, let lapse uh, in 2004, I believe. So what's the plan for this one? That's right. Well, it's interesting that it wasn't included in this package because it's not yet clear that it has enough Democratic votes. Uh, and also, in the Senate, it's essentially a non-starter. Several years ago, Dianne Feinstein brought this up after the Sandy Hook shooting. I covered that bill. And it garnered only about 40 votes or 40 uh, of, uh, lawmakers saying that they would support it, so well below the threshold needed. Um, it's something that President Biden supports. Uh, it's, it's something that, that Democrats do support. But when we're looking at what can actually get passed, you've seen even Chris Murphy, the Connecticut senator, really leading the talks on the Senate side, saying that he knows that that's not something that is going to have the support. So on the Senate side, they're looking at much more narrow provisions. So Nancy Pelosi might uh, say that they might consider this and that they want to consider it, but they know it doesn't have the support and they know that it's essentially a non-starter on the Senate side. So speaking of the Senate side, there were uh, there was is a there bipartisan group of senators that were meeting virtually to discuss this. Any progress? Well, they are continuing talks. And uh, Susan Collins, one of the Republicans involved in, this, uh, in these negotiations, said that the talks are moving quite quickly. But we don't yet have a framework. But here's kind of what they're looking at from what we know about what various lawmakers are saying. And it is a bipartisan group. You have John Cornyn, who was designated by Mitch McConnell to participate. He, of course, represents Texas. Uh, you have Tom Tillis of North Carolina involved in these talks. 
And what they're essentially looking at is, yes, addressing background checks in some way, but really focusing on what we've been calling red flag laws. And uh, this is something, legislation that has been proposed and worked on by Lindsey Graham of South Carolina and uh, Dick Blumenthal of Connecticut. Uh, this would uh, allow authorities to uh, confiscate weapons, firearms, from someone who is deemed mentally unfit by the courts. Uh, court order, a judge. Um, so they're working out the parameters here. But again, that's not going to necessarily be one big federal bill. Talking to lawmakers last week on the Republican side, they'd say that this is something that is, is best left up to the states. So what this legislation would be is essentially a mm. grant to the states, providing them federal money if they institute this kind of red flag law. So it's really an incentivizing measure for the states. Um, this is something that the details are are really going to matter here in terms of getting support. Um, you know, how long does due process take? Uh, who can petition the court for a, uh, a an order to confiscate weapons? Those are all details that need to be worked out. But what's important here is that Democrats and Republicans say that they are getting towards something. But again, big question marks about what that actually is. Congress, of course, comes back into session next week. And as we know, the pressure is mounting. We had, an, unfortunately, another mass shooting just yesterday. So as we've been talking about, you know, the, the biggest impediment to legislation is time. The more time passes, that relieves some of the pressure. But also, the more time passes, the more mass shootings are happening. And so that's something that also is going to keep the pressure on these lawmakers to come up with something to address this tragedy. Yeah, definitely, Caitlin. Thank you very much.